I'm Oblivion317, and welcome to It's a Rerun. Sorry that I couldn't receive your call, but I'm a little busy trying to find a show on TV that isn't filler. Please be patient with me, and I will return your call as soon as I can. Please leave a message after the tone. Ugh, there's never anything good on a Tuesday. Boring. Seen that one already? Oh, hell no! Which, in order to facilitate the use of puns, is being held on Wait, a Wait, what's that? You're a thinking machine, sir. No, that would be Well, based on that art style, this could be either really stupid or really funny. So, uh, what the heck? May as well stick around to see what happens. Three hours later... Whoa! For once, being a couch potato was actually productive! That was a very interesting show with plenty to talk about. I need to tell people about this. Maybe Redcore will let me talk about it on his show. Hey, this is Redcore. What's up? So the show opens up on a farm, and the first thing you'll notice about the show is the design. The out of lines coloring scheme and the simplified yet exaggerated character designs are a pretty clear sign that the show is going to focus more on the characters and humor than they are the actual visuals. But more on that later. We are then introduced to our main character Sheep. I am dead serious, that is his name. He lives a comfortable life as the farmer's favorite animal. Which really isn't saying all that much seeing as how the farmer literally steps over all of his other animals. But that's about to change, as General Specific is planning a conquest for world domination, which he will bring about using a sheep laser created by a non-privatized angry scientist. Not a mad scientist, by the way. He makes a habit of correcting people on that. Angry! Angry scientist! How hard is it to have you in the remembering of the word angry? Angry! Are you in the saying of that to get my goat? Yes! So, why does General Specific need a laser to conquer the world? Why does it require a sheep of all things? What makes sheep the sheep that will make the machine work? I do not have a clue. But that doesn't stop General Specific from sending his men, led by private public, to chase sheep down into the big city. Thus, the show properly begins. The show focused mainly on sheep trying to find a better life in the city. Which certainly isn't easy when you consider the people he runs into. There's Lady Virginia Richington, the aristocrat who practically owns the city and has a deep-rooted fear of sheep. Swanky, Richington's dog and sheep's love interest. Hey, if Spike and Rarity is a thing in both Equestria and Canterlot High, I am more than willing to buy this. The plot device, a machine whose job is literally her name, and many others. How did you get here so fast? We used the plot device! Hello. Now, given the ridiculous premise of the show and the characters' names, how exactly did this show manage to capture such a large adult audience? Well, I think one of the main reasons this happened is because of the humor, which manifests itself in a variety of ways on the show. The most prominent form of humor on the show are the amount of puns they use in their running gags which usually take the form of a sheep-related pun, such as to bleat or not to bleat, to sheep per chance to dream, and even, oh, I don't know, some pun on the word sheep. This also transcends into the characters, one of them being the sadistically evil little girl, Lisa Rental, a pun on the phrase, Lisa a rental. Next up is the humor that stems from the actual dialogue. There is a ton of fourth wall breaking in this show, whether it be from the self-aware narrator... So we ask, can sheep survive these two powerful anti-sheep forces? Who writes this stuff? Or any of the characters. The episode's structure was also pretty unique for the show as well. Each episode is split into three separate chapters that each have their own title. Before the first act, there would be a clip that would be completely unrelated to the actual storyline. This, of course, would always turn out to be another show that Sheep was watching on TV. Sheep would then change the channel, and the opening credits would begin. In between each act, there would also be a fictional commercial for a product by the Oxymoron Company, 
which would then cut to the actual commercials. Then the next act would begin. Bottom line, literal humor probably was the most notable aspect about Sheep in the Big City. Why? Because this results in a show that knows that it's going to be ridiculous, completely unrealistic, and just downright stupid. Now, there have been shows like this before. So what did Sheep in the Big City do differently? Well, because it knew it was going to have a stupid and ridiculous premise, it decided to go full throttle with itself and have a ton of fun with each setup. Because of this, Sheep in the Big City became a show that reveled in its own stupidity and put a lot of heart into itself. If I had to pick the episode that did the best job at this, it would probably have to be Bell of the Ba. I know, I know, just, just go with it. After Sheep accidentally swallows a prized diamond owned by Lady Richington, he suddenly becomes the pride and joy of the city. So, this is probably the best thing to ever happen to Sheep, right? He's finally found a good life in the city, Richington no longer has a reason to attack him, and he's on his way to the top of the social ladder, right? Well, this does come with its side effects. Because Lady Richington won't let anything happen to the diamond, Sheep is unable to see Swanky. Also, because of the attention Sheep is getting, both General Specific and the Farmer are now closing in on him quicker than ever before, making for quite an interesting dilemma. Now, I won't spoil how the episode ended, but I will say that it ended only in a way that Sheep in the Big City could have pulled off, making it probably my personal favorite episode. Sadly, this show never did get a special or a TV movie, so there's not really that much else to talk about outside of the show's two seasons of airing, which only allowed for 26 episodes. But that doesn't necessarily mean the show isn't worth taking a look at. Yeah, the setup is just silly, the art style needs work, and the humor is an acquired taste. But if you're willing to look past that, you'll see a show that's just a ton of fun to watch. Sheep in the Big City. I've watched it, you've seen it, it's a rerun.